I think, and I have predicted, to finish third in the American League East this year. And Lord Escuriel has the potential of 25 to 30 homers, a lot of RBIs. He's not going to steal you a lot of bases. But I like the Guriel pick late. Another player that I like late, Hunter Dozier. Let me ask you a question. Chat room, are you ready? How many triples, and if triples is a category in your league, tell me how many triples did Hunter Dozier hit last year for the Kansas City Royals? How many home runs, excuse me, how many triples did Hunter Dozier hit last season for the Kansas City Royals? That's your trivia question for today. And I want you just to type in and take a guess. I'm going to give this a couple of minutes. Andrea says 18. DK says 7. Neither one of you guys are right. I can tell you that. But you're on the right track. So let's keep looking there. I'm going to talk about another player on my list. Owen Wilson was hit 36. Hunter Dozier did hit 10. George, you are my genius of the day if I were leaving on it. Okay, but I'm not. Good answer, George. Ten triples for Hunter Dozier. He's third base outfield eligible. And on the chat, on the board I'm looking at, this is not my board. I'm looking at ESPN rankings this morning, guys. But on my board for ESPN, he's ranked 54th among outfielders. A potential value pick. Here's another, you know, this guy's a rookie. But I want to talk about Austin Hayes for just a moment. And there's a reason why I want to talk about Austin Hayes. Value pick. And I know that I'm looking upside here. I've already prefaced the whole show with that. Austin Hayes, it's already been announced, will probably lead off for the Orioles this year. And I know we're talking about the Orioles. But tell me a major league team who went the whole season and didn't score at least five or 600 runs. Okay, my point being, Austin Hayes, whose value is up in a lot of drafts, he's 69th ranked outfielder on the ESPN board right now. But he's going to lead off. He's got a good hit tool. He's got a little bit of power. And he's going to steal bases. So what if you're looking at Austin Hayes? I'm looking at projections. But I'm also looking at what he did in a limited, very limited audition last year. He had 309. He had four homers, a couple of stolen bases. Projected out he could get 24 to 25 homers this year and still 10 to 15 bases. Now, he's not your number one pick in a draft. I get that. But at number 69 among outfielders... Could you not do worse? Another player that I really like in the outfield of the value pick, remember when Austin Riley came up last year and he just, as the song goes, set the world on fire? And then he was quickly stomped out. He's been working this offseason and working on hitting the inside pitch. Staying in on the pitch. He's changed his hitting approach. He still has tons of power. I'm just saying I see a lot of potential upside with Austin Riley. The problem there is the Braves have not yet named their starting third baseman for the season. They've got Camargo and they've got Riley competing it out. Both were having good springs. The thing about This position, and as I understand it from reading about what the Braves' thinking process is, the player who doesn't start will probably go down to the minors to get reps. But I know what I saw out of Riley last year. I think the Braves know what they have there, and I think Riley is first man up in Atlanta. Now, he's listed as an outfielder, too. He's going to probably play third base, but he has outfield eligibility this year in most fantasy leagues, if not all. So let's keep our eye on the Atlanta Brave outfielder, Austin Riley. Now, a couple more guys I want to keep eyes on late in drafts. 
What about Yaz's grandson, Mike Yastrzemski? I think Yastrzemski came on last year. You know, he never could find a landing place. He was with Baltimore, got traded over to the Giants. And for San Francisco in that huge ballpark, he hits 21 homers in a part-time role, really. Hit 272. And I think Yastrzemski, again, looking late in drafts, provides a lot of upside. I'm not talking about a player who as is a rookie and may or may not even get a call-up. I'm talking about a player who is going to play from day one. And another player, I'm talking about another Oriole, Anthony Santander. Now, these are for deep leagues, guys. Again, you're going to get to an Anthony Santander possibly late, but he hit 20 homers last year for the O's in a part-time role and has incredible power. I like Santana's upside, and he should be a starter this year for the Baltimore Orioles. Let's look in the chat room. We got Andrea, DeMazins, Doug Boyle, King Hap, Lenny, Malpal, Timothy Hooker, Zelmo. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you in the chat room this morning. I love the calls we've had. You Feel free to call in if you have anything you'd like to say. Andrea has called. King Hap has called in. It's good to hear from you guys, and I really appreciate you calling in and being a part of this show today. I'm just putting my number up one more time if you'd like to call. Remember, at 11 o'clock today, Andrea is having the draft, and she's going to be broadcasting it live here on the network, so you want to tune in for that. Let's talk about a couple more outfielders that I think are just great value picks. And here's the next one. He's with Tampa Bay. He's going to be their DH, and it's Jose Martinez, former St. Louis Cardinal Jose Martinez, who had probably an off year last year, and he can't play defense at all. But in fantasy, as long as he's regarded and listed as an outfielder, I don't care if he DHs every day. I really like Jose Martinez, particularly at the draft position that he is listed, which is among outfielders, number 112. A player who's going to play every day with the hit tool of Jose Martinez at 112. I talked earlier about Starling Castro and how I thought his draft position was a joke. And I think in fantasy, Jose Martinez is is as well. Why do you not go and get Jose Martinez, who is one of the lowest rated outfitters. Look who he's ranked behind, okay? He's ranked behind Kyle Lewis, Nick Marquecas, Jose Peraza, Adam Hazley, Marvin Gonzalez, Jesse Winker, Jake Bowers. You get the point. And he's going to put up better numbers than any of those guys I just named. So why not take a flyer on Jose Martinez who will be the designated hitter. And what I'm reading in the St. Petersburg Times is that they're also going to try him at first base some throughout the season to keep his bat in the lineup. And if he can just perform adequately there, you're going to also have an outfielder who may also qualify at first base before too long, who's going to be in a lineup every day and in the middle of a raised lineup that's going to be really good this year. These are just some of my thoughts on some players that you might want to look at. Andrea's got a draft coming up. The draft scoring is based throughout the year on the draft that you picked today. And a Jose Martinez could be such a value pick, not only in the draft today, but in all of your drafts, period. So that's what I've got for you today, guys. It's great to have you in the chat room. It's great to be with you. Thank you for joining me. I'll be back, Chappie, tonight at 7. Don't forget, we've heard from different ones of you today on the radio, on the broadcast. Thank you for being with us. Have a great day, everybody. Be safe. Be smart. Stay well. And I'll talk to you later. This is Arnie. Have a great day.